Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining on us and welcome to Production Modeling Corporation's web presentation. Today's topic is nine checkpoints before starting a simulation project. This will be presented by Cortosi. He is a digital manufacturing engineer at PMC. Before we begin, though, I'd like to do a brief introduction to PMC. Subcore, if you could change the slide, please. Since 1979, PMC has helped all companies complete more than 7,000 projects and uh, help over 700 clients. Below you is a list of companies that are current and repeat customers. So if you want to check out the, the um, list of companies we have that we've worked with, you know, it's uh, pretty broad. Next slide, please. Today's session will be focused on simulation. But here's a queue of our core expertise areas. These include areas like quality and operational excellence, laser scanning and CAD, dynamic and static simulation, and industrial engineering services. I'll give you a few moments just to check out the slides and check out the services that we provide. Now, I'd like to turn things over to Core to begin our presentation. Core, take it away. Thank you very much, Brian. Hello, everyone. Now I'd like to introduce myself to begin our presentation. So my name is Kaur. I'm a digital manufacturing engineer at DMC. I work with um, the implementation of digital factory projects, mainly focused on robotic simulation, um, ergonomic simulation, and discrete event simulation through PLM platforms, especially with uh, Siemens Technomatics platform. Um, I have nine years experience in this digital world, and uh, the vast majority of my projects were aimed at the automotive industry. So that's our agenda for today's webinar. We are going to start with an introduction, an overview in, in simulation and discrete event simulation. We'll cover um, discrete event simulation benefits and uh, we'll also address nine checkpoints that we should consider before starting a simulation project. And finally, we'll enter into the, the Q&A section. So let's start by talking a little bit about simulation. And what is a simulation? So simulation is the, is the use of a computer program to model a real world system and its key behavior in order to, to validate decisions that um, affect the, the system. So through the simulation, we can create and we can uh, compare multiple scenarios to make uh, informed decisions considering all the, all the possible angles. And this enables our clients to, to try out different ways of operating the system without experimenting with the real system. So the, the simulation is also used to help with the design or the modification of a complex system, experimenting with uh, alternative combinations of uh, resources, um, people, machines, and etc. So we can say that in the simulation, the simulated time uh, usually moves much faster than our real time. So for example, one year of production in a, in a factory might be simulated in just a, a few minutes in the simulation model. So we can see here, uh, below we have some examples of simulations. So we have uh, traffic simulation, robotic simulation, and uh, discrete event simulation. We also have other, other types of simulation like uh, ergonomic simulation, dynamic simulation. And today we'll focus on discrete event simulation. And what is a discrete event simulation? So discrete event simulation or DES is the creation of a computer-based model or of a system or of a process as a sequence of events in time. So in the, in the discrete event simulation, the DES, each event occurs at a specific time and this causes a changes in the, in the state of the system. So between consecutive events, uh, it's considered that the system does not change at all. 
So the simulation can jump directly from the instant of occurrence of an event to the next event. Um, it mimics the operation of the system through time, and it provides a graphical representation of what is happening in the system as the model is running. So I will give an example just to understand how the DES models uh, works based on a, a acute theory. So for example, we can think about modeling a service queue system. And this queue is formed by customers who arrive at a, at a bank and wait for a service at the cashier. So in this case, we can say that the entities in the system are the customers who seek service and the events are the arrival of new customer, the beginning of the service at the cashier and the end of the service. This is equivalent to the, to the exit of the customer from the system. The system states, which can be um, which can be changed by previous events, are the number of customers in service queue. This is an um, an integer num an integer between a zero and n, for example, and the state of the teller. It's um, can be empty or busy, for example, and the random variables that must be identified to to model the stochastic component of the system are the time between successive arrival of customers in the system and the service time at the cashier. Here we have some uh, some images of some uh, systems modeled through the DES. And what are the benefits of using this type of uh, simulation? So first of all, the simulation makes everyone smarter about what and when to change because it, it, it not only helps or assists its user to make a good decision, but uh, the simulation also backs up with numerical proofs. So we can see here, uh, the simulation help us to visualize plans, analyze capital investments, analyze over under utilization of resources, evaluating system robustness, understand systems, model uncertainties, quantify the impact of uh, operational uncertainties, for example, the inclusion of maintenance data, MTTR, MTBF, downtimes, analyzing the defined bottlenecks. You can see some images of uh, some uh, charts from the simulation model. And uh, the simulation allows a test and experiment in a risk-free way at virtually no cost and in a fraction of time otherwise required. Okay, so the simulation, uh, simulation has become an, an essential tool for analyzing anticipated performance, uh, validating design, visualizing operations, um, testing hypotheses, and so on. But here we come with a question that's often overlooked. Is the simulation the right tool for the problem? So in, in the past, the simulation modeling was used for only very large or specialized projects that required programmers with uh, specialized training and much and much experience. But but right now, with the, the proliferation of different simulation software and more accessibility to it, we also have more users working on these applications, often without knowledge, without the required experience and, uh, and the proper training. So the simulation also leads to an an increasing dependence uh, to solve a, a variety of problems. So right now, um, let's address some checkpoints, important checkpoints to consider before selecting the analysis tool to any project. So here we have our first uh, situation when the problem can be solved using sense analysis. So we have an example here. Imagine the following. An automobile tech facility is being designed and the customers arrive at a handle to purchase their automobile tags at a rate of 100 per hour. The time for a clerk to serve a customer varies, but on average, it's five minutes. Okay. What is the minimal number of clerks required? So to avoid an explosive situation, we'll need at least nine clerks. And the more clerks, the shorter will be the average of waiting time. So this is an example. This is a, a problem that could have been analyzed 
by simulation, but that's unnecessary and it would take longer to program and run than the solution that we just covered. This is our first example. And here we go to our next situation when it's easy to perform the experiments on the real system. So let's go to another example. Imagine that we that a, um, a detailed model of a drive through fast food restaurant was built and used it to test improvements in customer service time by adding a second drive up window. It took weeks to complete this model. And imagine that a competitor uh, tests exactly the same concept by staging a, a second purse with a remote handheld terminal and uh, voice communication along the drive up line and completed the same the same scenario, the same uh, experiment uh, in just a few days. So what I want to say here is if the problem involves an existing system, which can be uh, used or measured without, without any consequences, uh, look first for a direct experiment to answer the questions. Okay. And what if the cost of the simulation exceeds savings? So the expense of the model, like data collection and analysis, is usually justified by the expected gain from the simulation. So estimating the total cost of a simulation project requires some experience. So here I have listed some factors to consider. Uh, project planning, problem definition and process documentation. Uh, model development and testing, data collection, review and formatting, model validation, experimentation and analysis, possible updates or enhancements to the model, documentation and simulation report, cost of simulation software and computer resources. So models of large facilities with uh, real complex procedures and control logic, like um, a large distribution center, for example, or that need to use a real and um, historical data can raise the cost even higher. And uh, simulation of a complex problem can easily run uh, into tens of thousands of dollars. And if the potential savings are not greater than the estimate, estimated uh, simulation costs, the model may not be justified. Another problem is when there aren't resources available for the project. So we need experienced people, uh, software, computers, and money to complete a successful simulation project. And the most critical component in any project is people experienced programmers or analysts, engineers who understand the problem, who select the proper level of detail to represent and that can translate it into the simulation model. So for example, if a trained simulation analyst is not available for a specific project, it might be the best and uh, less risky to look for outside help. So bear in mind that a, a poorly constructed model is worse than no model at all because the flawed results may be used anyway. So speaking of resources, uh, another class of insufficient resources is time. So there is the, the simulation should not be used when there isn't enough time to get useful results. And this is usually caused when the project schedule is too short, the model development and testing take too long, or the window is too narrow. So we can imagine a situation. Um, imagine that you have worked hard to finish a model. You carefully uh, verify it and validate it. And right now, you are in the middle of the experimentation phase when you are told that um, from now on, we are going to proceed with the facility because um, we don't have time to wait uh, for the simulation results. So this is frustrating, but th th this is not an uncommon problem. So if there isn't sufficient time to conduct a proper project, the analyst must make some coarser assumption or skip the tails or cut corners to meet the schedule. And how do you know if the critical details was left out and the results are not meaningful? We don't have, um, we don't have a guide that can define whether the the level of detail should be set because this is completely based on experience. 
on a project by project basis. So a simulation model should be detailed enough so that the questions posed can be answered, but not too detailed. After collecting the, the important results for the project, if there is still time available, then you can use this time to put more information, more detail in the model, like a better representation or uh, shorter codes, for example, and etc. And uh, a typical error for an inexperienced user is to start the model with too much detail. So it will take longer to develop and test than it was initially estimated and scheduled. So always remember that if the results aren't used, this project may be regarded as a failure. It may be better if you don't use the simulation, if there's just not enough time allowed in the, in the overall project schedule to produce results and put these results to use. And when we don't have input data and estimates available. So, here it's also considered as a, as a scenario where we should not uh, proceed with the simulation. So during the design phase of a simulation project, one of the most critical tasks is to determine whether the data required to meet project schedule is available, and if not, how it can be obtained. In some cases, um, in some cases the, the data may not be available, for example, and either impossible, or it can also be too expensive to collect. And I have a warning here. Don't fall into the trap of committing to a, to a simulation project and building the model before checking to see if the necessary data for this project is available. Because the temptation will be to proceed with the analysis, with the model anyway, since you have already expended the effort to build the model. And people, customer may be counting on, on, on your results. So, it's also possible to perform some um, sensitive testing using estimates of the data values, but this still requires estimates about the about the range of valuables for for critical data items. One more problem is when the model can be uh, verified or validated, and this is usually caused by by the lack of one of the three critical factors previously mentioned, which are people, data, and time. So if the analyst cannot understand how to properly validate the model, if we don't have a useful data for comparing the model results against the test scenarios to validate the model, or when the project schedule doesn't uh, allow for sufficient testing and validation, um, it's better not to use the simulation tool. Project expectation cannot be met. Okay, so nine times out of ten, failure to meet project expectation is due to failure to properly educate decision makers about what is realistic and possible when solving the problem with a simulation model. So, uh, the management, for example, can have a reasonable expectation, uh, and when it can be delivered, they can blame on the simulation software or also the analyst. And what can also happen? People with no experience in simulation often conclude that once a system is modeled, the model will be able to answer uh, any question they ask it. It can be difficult uh, to explain, and imagine it, especially late in, in, in a project, that the models are only capable of answering the explicit question they were designed to answer. Um, let me give another example. Imagine that we are going to simulate uh, a large beverage uh, facility with uh, productions in, in the range of 100,000 cans per day, for example. Uh, the question to be answered required a very, a very detailed model. So the analyst, the engineer decided to model each individual can uh, through the entire process uh, with uh, several hundred thousand parts flowing through this detailed system, this detailed model, and the model runs in something close to the real time. The animation proves useless because of the, the high demand for graphics. 
and uh, the analyst struggles to validate this model, but he managed to, to produce only, only one or two experiments per day. And what is the result? The, the, the management quickly loses interest in the, in, in the simulation. So if project expectation um, cannot be modified or controlled, uh, the project will be very difficult to complete successfully. It may be a case where the simulation tool should not be used. In the last case, we should not use simulation when the system is too, is too complex or can't be defined. So the system to be simulated must be uh, truly understood before simulation, or the analyst will be forced to, to guess or be creative. So some systems are so complex that building an accurate model is not possible. This is often the case where um, complex human behavior is a critical part of the simulation system. Um, I I'll give one more scenario. Um, Imagine a modern automated distribution centers. These are very complex and they often are, are simulated prior to implementation or modification. Most are driven by computerized uh, warehouse management system, WMS software, which selects and, uh, and combines orders to process. Um, almost all of the, the actual orders uh, processing is, is performed manually and the people run the facility, even in automated facilities. So typically, the simulated scenario is an average day and the model results can be quite accurate. But in a real facility, when an unusual event occurs and the, the order starts falling behind the schedule, a people will change their normal behavior or their normal activities to find a way around the system constraints in order to meet the schedule. So this kind of behavior can be quite varied and uh, impossible to completely describe and simulate for possible for all possible scenarios we can have. So the model results for for these scenarios almost never match what occurs in the in the real time and simply are reliable. So here we have um, a conclusion for these topics. So don't don't commit to a simulation project if there is no uh, if there is no need uh, or if there is a, a real chance that it can be properly completed, can meet the, the project goals and um, expectation, or the results won't be available in time to be used. So each analyst has a responsibility to, to make every project successful to help continue the use and uh, acceptance of the simulation modeling. So here we have listed that um, the PMC has several uh, years of experience with uh, discrete event simulation, as well as other types of simulation. And we have a team of highly qualified and experienced simulation professionals. So you can count on us to avoid the possible mistakes or increase the quality and the, the success of your simulation projects. Well, so our webinar has come to an end. I hope you enjoy it, today's content. So here we have our review. We discussed what a simulation is, what a discrete event simulation is and its benefits, and the nine checkpoints before starting a simulation project. So now I'm going to, to turn the voice over to Brian so we can get into the, uh, into the Q&A section. Yep, thank you, Hor. As Gore just said, we're moving into the Q&A session. So if you have a question for Gore that you would like to have answered, please utilize the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. Gore, uh, we did have a few questions come in throughout the presentation. We'll get started with those, but please, if you wanna have Gore ask a question about, you know, the topic on the, the presentation or something uh, related along those lines, uh, please do so. But Gore, the first question we did have come in is, what challenges can arise when there's no data or estimates available for a simulation project? When there is no data, okay. So when there is a lack of data or 
estimates for a simulation project, we can say that uh, several challenges can arise. So without sufficient data, it may be it may be challenging to accurately represent the real system or or to determine the the values of variables and parameters in the model. So this kind of situation can lead to to uncertainties and diminish the the reliability of the simulation results. So um, in, in cases like this, efforts may need to be directed uh, towards data collection or estimation techniques or finding some alternatives to address the lack of information before before proceeding with the simulation project. Okay, thank you, Cora. Um, another question we had, what other approaches can be considered if my system is too complex for a simulation project? Okay, so if the system is too complex, uh, it poses significant challenges for a simulation project. So it's crucial to evaluate the feasibility of using the, the simulation tool as a suitable approach for, for these cases. So some alternative modeling techniques or simplifying the, the assumptions may need to be explored to reduce this uh, system's complexity and simulate it. Uh, but it, it, it's important to um, it's important to recognize the balance between model accuracy and simplicity, because um, if we make it too simple, the results may not be reliable, or it can give us a uh, wrong output or wrong data. So understanding the the challenges and these uncertainties linked to the system's complexity, it's crucial to decide uh, if using if using the simulation tool is uh, your right solution. Okay, thank you, Cor. Um, I don't see any other questions coming at this time, so we will close the Q&A session. Thank you for answering those questions, Cor. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's presentation. Do you think of any additional questions or like to ask uh, anything related to uh, um, the presentation or future presentations? I recommend you going to our website at www.pmcorp.com. From there, you can submit, submit an inquiry to us and we will get back to you. Also, when you're there, please check out the services or um, the resources tab for other, up, other upcoming webinar presentations that might interest you. This webinar was also being recorded. So if you wanna check it out again, there is a recording that will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Search PMC videos, that's videos with an S and all of one word. Um, that recording will probably be, go up either later today or sometime later this week. Um, if you want to review the slide, share it with your colleagues, we recommend you do so. But with that, that will close today's presentation. Thank everyone again for attending and have a great day.